Hey there everybody, this is Shane R. Monroe, and today we're going to be looking at the physical characteristics of the Steam Deck. Now this channel's too small for me to have actually gotten my hands on one personally to attest to the ergonomic design or the weight, or how comfortable it might be to hold, so I've done the next best thing. I had one 3D printed. Now it's gold, but there's probably some Willy Wonka joke in here somewhere. But this device, this little 3D printed model, is an exact scale replica of the Steam Deck. So I thought to myself, if I could get my hands on one of these, I could get a good idea how it feels from a comfort point of view, and maybe I could weigh this thing down so that I could get a good idea what it would be like to actually hold and use one of these things in real life. So taking a look at this guy, you can see that it's pretty much fully accurate in terms of the button placements, the stick placements, the analogs. We have, the, we have all of the physical characteristics we need, including the handles, the buttons on the back, and of course the triggers on top. Now again, this is just a 3D model, and so it's actually very light. It's about 10 ounces. So this is not even close to accurate to the 669 grams of weight or 1.47 um, pounds that the Steam Deck is actually weighted as. So we're going to do a little experiment and simulate that weight. But in truth, what we really want to know is what does this thing feel like from a comfort perspective? I know much like everybody else, um, I was very concerned in seeing the ergonomics of having the D-pad and the buttons here on the side, these things here, and these track pads down below. Uh, quite frankly, a lot of this did not seem like it would feel very comfortable. A lot of people also are concerned about the width, how wide the thing is, and of course, how it feels to grip and hold and access these triggers while you're accessing the other areas of the device. So I thought at least having a fully 3D printed actual replica that was accurate would give us the ability to talk about how this thing feels um, from a comfort perspective. And then we're going to weight it down and see what 669 grams actually feels like. Okay, so let's get started. So the device has several different possible pain points. Uh, for anybody who's used uh, any sorts of controllers in your past, you know that there's a big elephant in the room with regards to can I reach what I need to reach when I need to reach it without being uncomfortable for long periods of time. So if we take a look at this device, um, first off, these grips are great. If you've got a Nintendo Switch and you have grips on it, excuse me, salacious. Ugh. So if you have a Nintendo Switch and there are no grips on the back of this like it is, you'll, you know that trying to get your hands down to here and, and trying to reach up to these, these trigger fingers, this can be very uncomfortable. In fact, it's actually, <laughs> it's actually easier to control the thing by taking the Joy-Cons out and propping this switch device up somewhere. But most people, including myself, have some sort of an add-on to add grips to the side. And the reason we do this is us people with these big monster hands, we the monster-handed people uh, who don't have elf hands, we need this to get a hold of to keep things comfortable. And this allows us to actually take our thumb off and move it down here versus trying to keep the whole device steady. So we know that these are necessary for comfort. Uh, and these do produce a great level of comfort. Um, and of course, by having these handles, it gives us access, better access to the trigger fingers, which frankly, if you are trying to move, aim, and fire at the same time, right, this is a very good configuration. It actually works out fairly well. And, and my hands are able to keep a good grip on the bottom. Now, one thing that I, I can tell you right now that I'm not a huge fan of is the fact that in order to grip, I have to have my fingers on the rear buttons. Now, I always use rear paddles. I'm a huge uh, Elite Controller fan. I'm a huge Elite Controller fan. And mainly because the paddles on the back give me the opportunity to melee and run without having to click in on the controllers, on the controller analog sticks. 
So in this case, I can actually get a pretty good hold of this controller without ever having my fingers on the paddles. Unfortunately, with this guy, in order for me to get a good hold on it, my fingers are already on the rear paddles, which means instead of actually squeezing and holding this thing, my fingers are going to have to lay here on the bottom as support, then use the rear back paddles um, as I need them. So from a design point of view, I'm guessing I'm going to disable the bottom paddles and I'm only going to use the top paddles. That way I can get a hold of the thing and keep a good steady hold on it while holding these buttons down probably and then be able to use these as my melee and run uh, based on the uh, game I'm playing. So that sort of handles that. Comfort wise, let's take a look. Is this comfortable? Is having the D-pad, let's say you're playing a standard retro shooter. And so you're going to be using the D-pad and fire buttons. Is this comfortable? And I'll be honest with you, like many of you, watching these videos, it's like there's no way that can be comfortable. But due to the size and the way that if it was closer, if your hands were closer, like with a controller, this would be a lot less comfortable. But the fact that this thing is spread out and your hands are further apart, I truly believe it actually works out. And I feel comfortable holding it like this. This feels comfortable. The start and select are easy to get to. Where this will probably require a little bit of acclimatization will be trying to use the D-pad inside of first person shooters where you're using it to selecting a secondary weapon or toggling on a grenade launcher or something of that nature um, because you're used to your thumb slipping down and touching the D-pad below. So having to reach over to the left is going to make it a little bit more interesting. And the same thing kind of goes along with this, right? We're used to, uh, most of us who are controller players, we're used to reaching up for the buttons. Reload, move, 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 reload, move, 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 you know. Uh, so instead, you're going to be doing move, 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 reload. Actually, you know, there's a lot less distance to cover there. Maybe it'll actually work out pretty well. Okay, so that kind of covers the primary controls. Let's talk about, and the analog sticks feel very comfortable where they are. Now, what about these guys? What about the touch pads? And uh, yeah, the touch pads, hmm. Uh, so I'm guessing that most of us, most of us are going to be using a split controller scenario where we're using our left hand to move and the right hand to aim. This was shown in most of the videos. Uh, and as such, um, this is not as comfortable. And, I'll, and, I, and I say that because in order to get down to this touchpad, your hand has to slide down on the grip, right? So normal configuration would be here. If I'm gonna reach down for that touchpad, I know this is really hard to see with your back to me, but I want you to see the back. If I have to reach down here, it makes this very comfortable on, in, uncomfortable on the back. I would probably slide my hand down and put my palm here in order to reach in order to reach that touchpad better, right? Unfortunately, what that means is my trigger finger now has to reach up high. It's still, it's still okay. I mean, I still can reach up there, but it doesn't give me the, the sense of holding it tightly that I would, I would expect to do. Plus, we have no weight on this device. I'm still using this as a 10-ounce device, not a 1.5-pound device. Um, so that would remain to be seen. The last thing that we would consider with this device in terms of controls would be a split touch screen plus some sort of a control methodology. And that's easy enough um, to test. Essentially hold the device with one hand and we're gonna use this as our moving around and maybe we use this to aim. Of course, how do you fire? You'd have to map a thing over here. But in order to split, in order to use the touch screen, one of your hands has to come off, which at 10 ounces, who cares? Right? Um, but let's look at a regular Xbox controller. If I had to take my hand off to do something, right? I, I don't have quite the weight <laughs> that the Steam Deck is gonna have. And I don't have the area of pull that I would have with a Steam Deck, right? So I don't know how the weight's gonna be distributed in here, honestly. I'm assuming they're going to try to make it as equally distributed as possible. But even so, taking your hand off of here as a support and having to work with the touch screen is probably going to be uncomfortable, especially if you have to do it a lot. That's going to have to remain to be seen. 
So overall, though, I, I will say I had a lot of doubts in terms of the ergonomic comfort of this device. And frankly, after having this 3D printed one that I could put my hands on and feel, I'm a lot more comfortable with the controls. Let's talk about the weight, though, because it's all nice and easy to use and it's nice and comfortable when it's half or less the weight that it's actually going to be. So to simulate the actual weight, I thought about dr drilling a hole in the top of this and putting sand or something in there. But that really wouldn't give you a good visual indicator as to how much this actually weighs. So I've got a Nintendo Switch here. And I'll be fair, I'll take off the, uh, I'll take off the grips. And so, right now, obviously, this is a lot lighter, right? <laughs> because this is 3D plastic and this is an actual device. Um, so let's even the odds a little bit. So what I did was, through a very scientific method, and I'm not going to go over it again now, I filled a bag full of rubble. This little sandwich bag is filled with enough gravel to make, along with this device, 669 grams exactly. So I'm going to attach this. <laughs> I'm going to use a piece of, use a piece of wire here, and I'm going to attach this to the device so that we can get some form of an accurate feeling as to just how heavy this device actually is. Obviously, I've done this before, just for the fun. But let's go ahead and tie this guy down. Now, understand the weight's not going to be distributed necessarily correctly, blah, blah, blah. And it's, this is really a hack, but it gives you an idea. So now we're talking about the device <laughs> as it actually weighs at 1.47 pounds or 669 grams. Yeah, wow, what a difference, okay? So that doesn't change the ergonomic factor, folks. I mean, everything is still comfortable to get to, but when you see people playing this on those videos and they've got their hands like rested on, or their elbows rested on their knees and things like that, yeah, you don't think 669 grams is a big deal. Kinda is. I'm not saying that it's not worth it. I'm not saying that you don't have to trade something for the power of a PC in the palm of your hand, well, in the palm of two hands, but my point is, it's heavy. I mean, this is something a lot of people aren't really talking about. I mean, even the people who've touched it and put their hands on it and played it, they're not really talking about the weight. And I think that that's sort of disingenuous to the audience because this is heavy. I mean, now we'll take a look. <laughs> wow, <laughs> this is a lot heavier. You know, I have no idea what this weighs. I have a scale here. Let's see. So I'm going to put this guy on the scale. We know that this is six, 669 grams. But let's put the switch on here, as is. And in grams, it's 399 grams, according to this scale. So and this is 669. That's, that's a pretty good weight difference. I know it's not fair. This machine does 10 times more than this machine does, but I'm trying to be fair here and offer some sort of an examination. If you're comfortable playing this all the time, this might not be quite as comfortable with my bag of rocks falling off the back of it. Uh, this sort of lends itself to understanding now why if you were trying to use this touch screen while you're holding with one hand, this is really uncomfortable. I mean, I'm, I actually have to shift my hands See how I'm putting my fingers long ways underneath this thing in order to keep it up so that I can use the touch screen. That's the difference in weight. Now, I understand this is not well properly distributed, but my point remains that if you're going to do something split like this, not comfortable at all. Like this, great, no problem, especially because I'm resting it on my palms. My palms are carrying the weight of this device. And all I'm doing now is just laying my fingers on top of it. So honestly, from an ergonomic standpoint, the weight doesn't change anything. What this weight does do, though, quite frankly, is it does change the longevity of, of using this device, I think, personally, in a long-running um, session. And with two to eight hours of battery life on the Steam Deck, maybe that's okay. I mean, I wouldn't want to play, I wouldn't want to play, hold this thing up for two hours with this bag strapped to the back. Um, so, yeah. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed looking at the physical characteristics, even if we can't look at an actual Steam Deck like other channels do. I know we can't do a real Steam Deck here, at least not yet, but hopefully this gives you an idea from a comfort perspective. If you were holding off saying, man, that doesn't look comfortable, that doesn't look comfortable, forget about it. It's comfortable. Every, they did a good job. They did a good job. The weight, that's going to be the factor as to how long the average person is willing to hold up 1.5 pounds 
to play games on. We'll see. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe, hit the little bell, get notifications for future videos. I'm Shane R. Monroe, and as always, thanks so much for watching. Take care.